Hi guys, welcome to the exam room. Dr. Kyle Ross here. I'm going to give you some information, uh, a first-hand look at the beautiful slit lamp. All right, so here we are in my exam room. Now, when you guys come across the slit lamp, it's probably not going to be in this great of shape. Isn't this pristine? <laughs> Likely, you're going to see a slit lamp in a closet in a back room in the emergency department. So, uh, just keep in mind uh, that this is something uh, that can be looking different than this. So, let's do a quick five-minute tutorial on some of the things that we've taught you already. So, with the slit lamp, it's going to be mounted to a table of some sort that can raise up and down. The patient will be sitting behind the lamp. Sometimes we'll have controls here that'll raise our chair up and down, or of course move the slit lamp up and down. Okay, we can also turn the power to the slit lamp on and off here if I like. Okay, uh, we have on the slit lamp the tower portion, woohoo, and we have the ocular portion. The ocular portion is most important for the provider. These oculars, one goes for each eye. If we wear glasses, these will be rolled up. If we do not wear glasses, you will unroll them so that we have good optics looking into the oculars. These will give us magnification, okay? However, we can get more magnification on the side of the oculars. 6X, 10X, and 16X are the ones that you're gonna use the most, okay? For just general looking at the cornea. 40X you'll never use, don't worry about it. 25X if you're good, you may use. Uh, but generally, right, 16X and 10X. We're gonna control the slit lamp physically here with our joystick. Our light levels we can control here with the rheostat. There's a lock here on the side, so if we're doing a procedure, I can lock the lamp. I will unlock the lamp to show you how to move it. We can physically move this machine forwards and back. Always start pulled back all the way. Have the patient put their chin in the chin rest, forehead against the top bar. Line the lateral canthus of the eye up here at the black line. When the patient is in, forehead against the top, chin in the chin rest, you will push the lamp forward forwards towards them until it comes into focus, okay? Fine focus will then be done by pushing the joystick forward or back. I can raise or lower the light position with the joystick, okay? So that pretty much does general looking in oculars. As we go to the tower, the tower is movable. We want to be able to change the angle of our light to get a better look at the eye. With different types of light, in different types of sections of light, we'll get different views. So let's start here up at the top. At the top, I can change the height of my beam by twisting a little knob here. It's generally in this type of location. We also have our filters from full on light, filtered light, UV filtered light, a red free filter, a green dot, or a blue, fi blue free filter, cobalt blue. This is going to be, in our particular situation, best used with sodium fluorescein staining. You'll use this a lot, okay? The other one that you'll use primarily is gonna be the full-on or the filtered. So you can change the light that's going into it. I can also change the thickness of the beam by turning this knob here on the side. This is a handy dandy knob because I can turn the lamp forwards and to the side so I can get better views as I need. If I want to just do a washed out view, no beam whatsoever, some slit lamps will have this diffuser that I can flip up on the mirror and that'll just give me a nice broad white light kind of for gross assessment of the adnexa and the ocular structures. Flip down, we're going to be dealing with our slit, our tiny beam of light looking at the eye as we need. So in general, that's the uh, view of our slit lamp and what you will see. They will look slightly different than this. Not all of them are the same, but nonetheless, they all kind of react the same way. There'll be some form of mechanism to move the lamp up and down, fine focus, side to side. There'll be some mechanism to slide the lamp arm from side to side and change angle. A mechanism to widen the beam 
a mechanism to shorten the height of the beam, and then of course a focusing, which is key for us when we're setting up the instrument. I hope that helps. That's a brief five minute tutorial. Let's get back to the lecture.